Hi guys, it's Angie with Fun Endeavors Tie-Dye Lab. So today I'm going to compare the difference between a tall deep scrunch shirt and an incline twist. I want to see which one shows off the color splits better. Okay, so let's start with the tall deep scrunch shirt. I'm using a plastic toter container and inside of it I have two plastic baskets which I purchased from the Dollar Tree dollar store. I'm placing one upside down and the other one on top because I want all of the muck, which is the dye that's mixed with the melting ice, to drain away from the shirt. Then to keep my tall deep scrunches, I'm gonna use some wiffle balls and I'm using baseball size wiffle balls. I'm gonna place the shirt down inside of the basket and kind of scrunch it around the wiffle balls. Now I'm gonna take and place some ice on top of the shirt. I want to place some pretty large chunks of ice kind of in between the wiffle balls. Then I'm going to place some more ice over the top. I'm not going to add a second layer of ice, so I want to make sure I add plenty the first time. For this comparison experiment, I thought I would use a color that splits really well. Like I said, that's what we're trying to compare is to see whether the tall deep scrunches or whether the incline twist gives you better color splits, or at least which one you can see the color splits better on. So for this experiment, I'm going to use Strawberry Skies from Happy Cat Tie Dye. I first found Happy Cat Tie Dye and all of the cool colors that she mixes on Facebook. But you can also order her colors from her website, which is Happy Cat Tie Dye. I'll leave a link down below in the description for this video. If you'll notice, I tried to go a little less heavy handed with the dye. I, for the most part, covered most of the ice, but I did leave some bare spots. I don't wanna just put way too much dye on top. Okay, so once I have the dye on top, I'm going to add a little bit of additional soda ash to the very top and put the shirt aside to allow the ice to melt. I let the shirt process for about 24 to 48 hours after all the ice melted. For the incline twist, I'm going to lay the shirt flat and then I'm going to grab an area just a little bit below the armpit of the shirt, lift the shirt up and just start to twist it. While I hold with one hand, I'm going to twist with the other hand. You can twist from another area of the shirt. I've twisted from like the shoulder seam or the hem before, and those work great. It just makes the fold or the twist a little bit longer. This shorter twist will actually fit in my shorter pieces of vinyl guttering. So that's what I'm choosing to do today. Once I have it twisted, I'm going to place the shirt in my vinyl guttering. Then I'm going to take a piece of kite string and tie it to the very end of the twist. Then using a little metal clip, I'm going to clip the piece of kite string to the end of my piece of vinyl guttering. This is going to help keep that shirt or the twist portion from sliding down into the muck. So I don't want it to be down in the runoff from the melting ice mixed with the dye. Now, just like the other shirt, I'm going to add the dye over the top. So with the piece of vinyl guttering still laying flat on my table, I'm going to add on a layer of ice. And just like the other shirt, I'm not going to add on a second layer of ice. So because this fold is a little bit thicker, I'm going to grab the ice and push it down in on top of the shirt as well as I can so that I get a good layer of ice on.
Now to incline the shirt, I'm going to take this piece of vinyl guttering and place one end down inside of a plastic tub or tote that has pretty tall sides. This will put my shirt at probably about a 45 degree incline. Then I'm going to sprinkle strawberry skies over the top of the ice. After placing on an additional sprinkle of soda ash, I'm going to place this container aside and allow the ice to melt and the shirt to process. I left it the same amount of time as I did the Tall Deep Scrunch shirt. Because of the thickness of the fold with the incline twist, I added a little bit more dye to the very top of the ice than I did on the other shirt. So after processing, I took both shirts to my utility sink and I rinse them in cold water to rinse out the soda ash. To save time, I'm only gonna show how I rinse the incline twist shirt. I did the tall deep scrunch shirt the same way. After rinsing in cold for a while, I warmed the water up to hot and continued rinsing in hot water to rinse out the excess dye that didn't bond with the fabric. I prefer to go ahead and soak the shirts instead of just continuing to rinse for a long time. So I ran some really hot water in my utility sink, added a little bit of blue Dawn dish detergent to the water, and allowed the shirts to soak. When the water cooled off, I changed it out and continued that soaking process until the water was almost clear. Then I put both shirts into the washing machine, washed them using a hot water cycle with a little bit of Dharma's professional textile detergent, and now that the shirts have been washed and dried, this is what they look like. Okay, so here's a quick look of both of the shirts together. The Tall Deep Scrunch shirt is on the left and the Incline Twist is on the right. But let's start talking about the Tall Deep Scrunch shirt. As you can see, the purple is the predominant color on this shirt. And you can see all of the cool color splits. I like the kind of peachy color. That one was a little bit unexpected. Of course, there's a lot of blue, green. Like I said, this is just a gorgeous color. And I actually think that the design on this shirt looks kind of like flowers. The wiffle balls underneath help give dimension and allow the dye to move around those hard wiffle balls. And this time I used the smaller baseball size wiffle balls. I suspect that the shirt would look a little bit different if I used the larger softball size wiffle balls. That might be a fun experiment to try in the future is seeing what difference the size of wiffle ball makes. I'll have to write that one down. Okay, so let's move on to the incline twist shirt. As you can see, the primary color on this one is, well, kind of the purple and blue because they're both pretty dominant on this shirt. It has a lot of color splits and the color splits are going in streaks down the shirt. So there seems to be pretty large chunks of color. I kind of think that this one, when you look at it, almost looks like a side fan fold or even a side mandala. And I really like the dye movement, the way the dye just flows down the shirt. I think that's a cool effect. Okay, so let's compare both of the shirts together. So, like I said earlier, they both have the same color splits, but I think that the color splits or the variety of colors jump out at me a little bit more on the Incline Twist shirt. They're all there on the Tall Deep Scrunch shirt, but they're just a little bit more subtle. So I know I used quite a bit of dye on both of these shirts, but that's my technique. I'm comparing for my technique. So I could have probably gone a little bit lighter on the Tall Deep Scrunch shirt, maybe had a few more of the color splits stand out a little bit more, but 
I'm comparing the way I would die a tall deep scrunch to the way I would die an incline twist. If a hundred different people did the same exact experiment, we would get a hundred different results. They wouldn't all look the same. So, I mean, you can kind of take this with a grain of salt. Maybe you don't use as much dye as I do when I die. I know I tend to be kind of heavy handed. I tried not to this time, but these are the results I get for the method in which I dye. I actually used Strawberry Skies on a Buffalo brand hoodie from Costco and got totally different results. I dyed that one using tall deep scrunches and I've added in a photo so that you can kind of see how different it is from both of these t-shirts. Both of the t-shirts are Gildan Ultra Cotton t-shirts that are 100% cotton and the Buffalo hoodie is mainly viscose. It's about 70% viscose. So, I mean, the color is just very different on that. Instead of it being a purple, it's more like a bright, deep magenta color. And a lot more green or aqua is showing up versus kind of a turquoise color on the t-shirt. So, this kind of showed a couple of different things. It showed that a dye color doesn't necessarily look the same on every fabric, which we already kind of knew that. I mean, if you're using something that has a lot of polyester, a dye color is not going to look the same. But just between like cotton and viscose, they look very different. Same dye color, everything the same. I mean, I actually had all three of these out and showed them to my husband and he couldn't believe that they were all the same color. He thought that the hoodie was definitely a different color. And I said, nope, it's the same color from the same container even. So keep that in mind if you're dyeing maybe a fabric that you're not used to dyeing. It may not look exactly the same as if you were dyeing cotton fabric. So what was the conclusion from my experiment? I mean, does one method show the color splits better than the other one? I wouldn't necessarily say that one of them is better than the other one. They're just a little different. If you want more subtle color splits, I like the tall deep scrunches. If you want maybe larger chunks or a little easier to see all the colors that are in a dye, then I think an incline twist. But I don't necessarily think one is better than the other. I don't know, what do you guys think? Which one do you think is best to highlight the dye and the dye color? Or is there another method that you guys prefer, which kind of shows the color splits off better? Please drop me some comments down below and let me know. And if you guys have enjoyed this experiment, I sure would appreciate it if you would like the video. And if you haven't, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you'll hit the bell, then you'll be notified the next time I upload a new video. Thank you all for watching, and I hope you have a great day.